Rightio, we're getting stuck into the Ladybird FPV project now. I'm just going to show you what I'm doing here. As you can see on this camera down here, we've got a little LCD screen. And that LCD screen is going from this camera here. And excuse the mess, but you see that camera? That camera is the one that is uh, going to go on the Ladybird. It's that little tiny little one gram camera. And over here I've got the LCD showing what the camera sees. And excuse my really untidy room. Because it is an awful mess at the moment, but you can see. There we go. You can see around the office. See all the gear. Beautiful. And so what I'm going to do now is just see how low a voltage that camera will work on. And to do that, I've got this hooked up to the power supply here. And excuse me while I hold the camera with one hand and twiddle knobs with the other. But you can see we're actually at 4.9 volts now. Now the and the picture's still working. Now the um, the camera is rated for 5 volts, but I think it will work a lot lower. And if we can get it to run down to 3.3 .3 volts, then that means we won't have to put a regulator or a boost circuit on there to step up the single LiPo voltage. So let's take that down 4.1. Oops, try and get that in the scene so you can see. See, we've still got a picture. 3.6, 3.4, 3.3, 3 volts. And we still have a picture down here from the camera. So that is actually a brilliant... That means I don't have to build a step up or use a boost regulator to get the voltage I need to run the camera. The camera runs straight from that one cell LiPo. That's truly excellent. So now I shall get on and do the rest of the project. And why have I got my oscilloscope going? Well, because I'm looking at this little camera here. This is the little one or two gram camera from Security Camera 2000. And I want to hook it up to one of these 200 milliwatt boards for the little wall camera. Ladybird, but normally you need to have one of these in the way. This is a capacitor. This is a 330 microfarad capacitor. And as I mentioned in my backpack, first backpack video, this is to block the flow of current from the camera to the board so we don't fry anything up. But I'm just going to check on this camera and make sure, because if this camera doesn't have what we call a DC offset, then I may be able to just wire it directly to the board, saving myself the weight of this. It's not much, but when you're trying to pull something light, every little gram matters. So. At the moment our oscilloscope is just sitting here and this is the uh, the zero volt level. I'll just move that. Where are we? Let's go. Um, no, it's okay where it is. We'll just leave it there. Zero volts. And we've got 500 millivolts or half a volt per... Now look, don't you like my phone always does that when I'm busy making videos. Um, each of these little divisions here, I'll zoom in so you can actually see what we're talking about because it's quite interesting. To adjust the camera position. Shoot the cameraman, he's not very good. Um, each of these little divisions is half a volt. So the thing, when we connect this up and make the camera go, we should, if we're lucky, the bottom of the pattern that's displayed won't be any lower or higher than this. And the top will be up about here somewhere. So let's just hook it up to the power. See what it does. There we go, look at that. There's the output from the camera. Now, of course, it doesn't look like a picture that you'd expect to see on an LCD screen or anything. It is, in fact, just the output of the camera. Now, you notice it changed there. I'm actually moving my hand in front of the camera. So what you're seeing is the change that it has on the pattern that comes out of the camera. But the key things to notice, the important thing to notice, which is really good, is that this level here goes right down to zero. So it's not as if the whole thing is up higher and it's sitting on, a, on what we call an offset voltage. That's good because it means I may be able to hook this camera directly up to the little board and save myself some weight. This is We're doing this rather technically. We're doing it by the book. So hopefully we'll get the lightest possible FPV solution for the Walkera Ladybird. Now let's take a little bit of a closer look at what we've got here now. As you can see, um, I've put an aerial on the little module here. Now this is just a simple sleeve dipole antenna at 5.8 GHz. I made that by cutting back a little more than quarter of a wavelength of insulation, folding the braid back down and then putting some heat shrink over it so you can basically see it's a bit like those antennas you see on the 2.4 gig receivers but half the size. Now um, there is the board on the bottom here I've put some regulators I put a single little regulator in there that's a LM1117 because these boards only work on 3.3 volts and the batteries are up to 4.2 volts so have to regulate it down. Now I was thinking of using a diode just to drop it but now I thought I'd go with a low dropout regulator and see how that works. And actually it seems to work right down to 3 volts on the battery, which is good because that's about, well, I found that my little ladybird 
doesn't like flying once the battery gets down to about 3.6 volts so got a bit of headroom there and then we've got the camera here which I'll be wiring up I've tested it and we can use it without a capacitor so I'm just going to wire these wires positive is red wire yellow is the video wire and the earth's already on there wire those on and there we go that becomes the entire airborne FPV system just runs off the single cell that powers the normal Walkera Ladybird and I've even got somewhere lost it I'm going to use the little let me get it down off the desk here to power the whole thing I'm just going to plug it into one of these auxiliary channel connectors here in fact there's the lead I was thinking of this is a little lead that plugs in there this will go off to the FPV gear and power the FPV gear simple as that don't have to do any soldering to the actual ladybird at all so we get on and finish it now amongst all this mess so let's see how much we're actually going to be adding in terms of weight now if these silly scales will stay zeroed here is our FP look at that see rubbish um, the look at it just changes look all by itself it's crap these scales are useless but oh, they do work sometimes anyway let's put the bits on and six grams five grams <laughs> oh my god never buy cheap scales from China they're worse than useless five five or six grams it says six take those off and if it goes back to zero that's probably what it was yep six grams anyway I'd say we've got about six grams of weight yeah five or six grams in the bits that we're going to be adding to the little Lotus which is an awful lot lighter than that keychain camera which I think was only 17 grams or something so it shouldn't really affect the performance of the little multi-rotor very much at all so here it is it's the Walkera Ladybird FPV project and she's all ready to go look I've got the camera underneath try and get some light on this you can see the camera underneath there and there's the little 200 milliwatt transmitter board that I've added you can see it's got a little regulator I've added to the board there as well wired straight through to the camera all sits underneath and when she's sitting down flat there's actually whoops plenty of room there's a bit of clearance for the camera and everything we've got the 5.8 gigahertz sleeve dipole antenna here which I've made up from a length of cable and the power feed for the FPV just comes up and plugs into one of the auxiliary channel boards on the multi-rotor itself on the control board so there we go it's nice and simple piece of cake and the real question you're going to want to know is how much does this all weigh now I've got the bat you see there's a battery a standard Walkera battery is actually installed into that so we'll put it on the scales and we'll see what the when they zero and see what it all comes to 36 37 grams all ready to go battery installed camera on board the only thing I haven't put on there is the dinky little shell because I think it looks a bit cooler without it actually so let's go and see how this micro UAV FPV model flies <laughs> 